Hello children and welcome to a new chapter natural calamities. So in this chapter we will be dealing about all the natural calamities that we see around us. Before we get into what is natural calamities, let's see what is a calamity. So events that take place which cause great damage to human life as well as property is called as calamity. and if these calamities are caused due to natural factors or because of the earth they're called as natural calamities so under natural calamities in this chapter we will be looking into earthquakes we'll be looking into cyclone and floods and we will be looking into drought so first let's see earthquake now when you see an earthquake When there is an earthquake the ground shakes along with the ground the buildings also shake and due to this there could be cracks that develop along the walls of houses and because of this the entire house itself may fall down For example for a major earthquake that happened in India we have the Gujarat earthquakes of 2001 Now major earthquake is disastrous and it can lead to toppling down of chimneys if the chimneys topple it could lead to fire accidents it could snap electric wires and even break water mains so you can see the amount of damage that an earthquake can do indirectly and people may even lose their loved ones they may lose their own lives or they may lose their belongings due to an earthquake people even have to live in tents for many weeks after an earthquake till they can build their homes so as you can see in this picture if if there was somebody living inside this house they have pretty much lost everything that they call home because their entire home is devastated and before they can build another home they have to live in tents and manage with what they have which is a pretty sad state now the government does its bit to help the people in need they help by providing tents they provide beds and they provide food to the homeless people who have suffered due to an earthquake and many times the army is called on to help people now if you see there are certain countries of the world which are called as countries prone to earthquakes for example we have japan which is prone to earthquakes because earthquakes keep occurring very frequently there if you see in india also there are a few parts which are prone to earthquakes now the important question we must understand is what should we do if there is an earthquake now this is simple survival tactics something that you need to do when you are in an earthquake the first one is if you feel that the ground is moving or the wall hangings are shaking by itself simply run out of the building just run because you are a lot safer outside where nothing can fall on your head rather than inside the building when the entire roof can crash on your head so you are a lot safer out on the street so the minute you feel something is shaking just run out of the building and we must not enter the building even after the shaking has stopped or even after the earthquake has stopped because you don't know the amount of damage that the earthquake has actually done what if there are cracks the minute you walk back in the entire building may collapse and fall on you so do not enter the building even after the earthquake has stopped and sometimes hours after the actual earthquake maybe even days after it we feel that the earth is still shaking so these shakes that are felt hours and days maybe even months after an earthquake has occurred is called as the after shocks of the earthquake the next one we will be talking about is cyclones as well as floods so this is an aerial view of the cyclone that is visible from a satellite when you say cyclones a cyclone is a very strong wind which is accompanied with very heavy rain this is very common in the coastal regions the strong winds and rain can damage houses they spoil the crops and they even blow away electric lines and when there is heavy rains the 
river levels may increase above the bank and water enters into the homes in the fields that are nearby these rivers and they cause floods so cyclones ultimately leads to floods and floods also happens near the sea during cyclones because there are very strong winds which causes very high waves so from here because these winds are pushing all the water towards the seashore here they will carry all the water this way and because of this water enters into the shore so these are called as tidal waves now because of cyclone and floods people as well as animals die also there is a lot of damage that is caused to life as well as property now weather forecasters often can predict a flood or a cyclone because they are monitoring the earth from above through a satellite and they know the kind of movements of air and water that happens around us and when they see that there is a cyclone that is approaching a warning is given to people either on tv or on radio or through newspapers so they raise a warning saying there is a cyclone that is nearby so people prepare and how do people prepare people get ready by moving their animals and their own belongings to a lot more safer place sometimes if it's a major warning they themselves move to places where the cyclone is less likely to hit but unlike humans and animals crops cannot move and they get damaged when cyclone or floods happen there are a lot of rescue teams that take position now these rescue teams could be people of the community or people of the locality or they may be government agencies which come forward to help the people in need army is also called like any other natural calamity the army is called and the army helps in airlifting stranded people so this is a classic picture of how airlifting people who are stranded is and they even use the army flights to air drop food there may be pockets of people who are stuck on roofs during floods who have no ways of reaching any food materials and they will die due to starvation so to prevent that the army drops down food to them so this is air dropping food and medicines The government even sets up relief camps for the homeless. Again here just like earthquakes homes are destroyed because of cyclone and floods. And for the people who've lost their homes, the government helped them by establishing relief camps. Doctors are also put on duty to prevent outbreaks because whenever there's a lot of water, if you can see this image, all kinds of water mix. You have sewage water, you have river water, sea water, every possible water mixed with dirt and rubble that is present in our environment get washed on. So these may lead to outbreaks of diseases like cholera, gastroenteritis and typhoid. So to prevent these doctors are put on duty. there is an organization called as the red cross which comes forward in times of needs to provide medicines clothing as well as blood to affected people so you can see the amount of damage cyclone and floods does to us and our property we'll move on to what is drought now when you see drought drought is a dry period where the rainfall is below average In India in the year 2002 several regions did not get enough rainfall and they declared these areas as drought affected so the drought affected states of India were Uttar Pradesh Andhra Pradesh Chhattisgarh Haryana Maharashtra Orissa Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu so these were said to be drought affected states Now if there is no rain there is not enough water for everybody to drink even pumps and reservoirs lakes dry up and because they dry up you can see how the surface of soil is wind can easily take away the top soil causing soil erosion which will leave the land barren no more fertility will be left in the soil for things to grow and poor monsoon rains also cause the ground water levels to dip and because of this cities do not get enough water in their taps so you can see how one is a chain reaction to another everything is interrelated 
Now, due to drought, farmers do not get enough water to water their crops because of which their crops will die. When crops die, there are not enough grains that come to the market. So, in the market, whatever food grains are there, their prices will go up. Now, at times like this, there are some people who take advantage of the situation. They hide the grains that are already there. They wait for the prices to go up, and then they release so that they can make more money. So, there are some people who even take advantage of certain natural calamities. Now, not just crops, even the livestock or animals that farmers own will die because there is nothing to feed on. There is no water to drink. And during severe drought, ultimately people also die due to shortage of food. Now this is known as famine. When there is a famine, there is no water to drink, there is no food to eat, so people die of thirst and starvation. Now famine causes widespread of diseases which leads to conditions called as epidemics. A large amount of money is needed to deal with situations like drought. Because food and water must be distributed to large number of people as well as animals to make sure that they survive. So as you can see, these are three different pictures which depict the sad case of droughts and how scary it can be. So with this, we complete this chapter on natural calamities. Let's do a quick recap. We first looked into what were natural calamities. We said that calamity is when all our property and lives are lost and when they are caused due to natural factors, we call it as natural calamity. Then we looked into earthquakes. We said that the earth shakes, the building shakes and there are cracks that develop and it's an earthquake. We even learnt what we should do when there is an earthquake. Then we looked into cyclone and floods. We saw the massive amount of damage that cyclone can do because these are wind at a high speed that causes very heavy rains. And we saw that because of water and tidal waves, there is also floods and there is a lot of loss to life and property. Then we spoke about drought. Lastly, we saw that this is nothing but areas which are affected with rainfall, which is less than the average rainfall because of which there is no water and the plants die, plants die, animals die. If plants and animals die, ultimately leads to human death because of starvation, which is called as famine. So we spoke about these natural calamities. So with this, we complete this chapter. If you have any doubts, please get back to us and we will definitely answer your queries. If you like the video, hit the like button. Please share and subscribe. Thank you.